All right. Welcome back to the podcast, Sarah. How's it going? Thanks, Mike. It's going great. I'm so excited to be back with you here. I'm excited too. And I'm excited about the topic we're going to discuss today. Um, For those who are new here, so Sarah has actually been on the pod before. Um, She's a naturopathic doctor uh, that started her own business, which is actually a really unique business. Um, She created a business that fits with like what her her uh, her interests are. And so she does a lot of copywriting specifically around the health and wellness space. And I'll let you kind of describe exactly what you do. I'm just giving the the short introduction here. But uh, yeah, her business is the wellness writer. Um, And it's a really fascinating story, fascinating business. So if you haven't listened to the first episode, go tune into that one. But on this episode, we will kind of I actually kind of want to dive into a little bit about where you're at in your business and how how everything's going. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, sure. let's yeah. Right so I'm a copywriter specifically for the naturopathic and the functional medicine community, because I don't want content to be the thing that is keeping people stuck from building the practice that they love. And so I'm all about helping practitioners find the right words, what to say, how to say it so that they can really show up and, and share their message and really connect with more ideal clients and, um, just being able to use copywriting content to um, be a key part of of building a great um, naturopathic or functional medicine practice. So um, you asked kind of where I'm at in my business. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. How's, how are things going? I mean, so yeah, just multiple ways that I am supporting practitioners. I think by far in a way, my most popular service is a content subscription where I provide practitioners with um, a bundle of current health content for them to use and repurpose for things like weekly emails and social media posts, all that nurture content that, you know, they say, share your message, be consistent, right? Deliver value, which is so much easier said than done when it comes down to it, because it takes so much time. And so the idea with that, um, it's a membership called Nurture Unleashed, where to me, hey, a new study comes out about probiotics. Why should just one practitioner be sharing it when 100 can share it and just put their own little spin on it? So that's the idea with that membership is um, I deliver kind of a bundle of content to kickstart their nurture content. And um you know, everyone has the the right to then put their own spin on it, you know, change change it to their personality, add a little touch here and there to make it their own. Um, so that's that's been, I would say, you know, kind of my most popular service. But um I I work one-on-one with practitioners. So for those who are feeling like I need some stuff written for me, right? I need a new sales page. I'm I'm going to sell an online course. I really need this to work well. So I do the one-on-one work in uh, VIP days, which is really fun. And um, I've built a whole copywriting, li- a library of copywriting templates that um, we can touch on a little bit. But, you know, for the most part, it's like, I want to put the tools into practitioners' hands to make this easier because copywriting creating content is so easy to get stuck. Like it's a hurdle that a lot of like practitioners didn't sign up for this. <laughs> and all of a sudden here we are. And in order to build a business and, and have a pre- presence online, you got to pump out content. You got to have good copy on your website. And, and I don't want that to be the thing keeping people stuck. So that's what I'm here to help with. And I know you wanted to, to talk about AI. That's the yeah. you know newest thing on the content scene, which I think is fascinating. And it's something that I'm bringing in to my programs and and the work that I'm doing with practitioners. And so um, yeah, I, it's I, another tool, you know, like I'm all about getting the tools into practitioners' hands. And so it'll be fun to talk about this latest tool. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, the other thing I'll mention is, you know, First of all, you know, as a as a solo practitioner, people that are listening that are solo practitioners, it's like you are wearing many hats. Um, I think the services you provide takes out, you know, takes a lot off the plate, especially around like internal marketing, 
um, providing value, like re repeat value. And so I know you, you know, not only does, so first of all, she's a sponsor of the podcast. So just letting y'all know that. So if you want, yeah, there's a link in the bio so you can try her Nurture Unleashed, which is really awesome. Um, but not only does it provide the content, you're also kind of providing the the um, the prompts to like initiate a sell. Um, you're also providing like instruction on how to organize the content. It's like you're somewhat like there's training and, and instructions in the content bundle that's really helpful to someone who's new to this um to this style of marketing you know putting out just helpful information is not going to grow your practice mm -hmm. so that's part of the content strategy is providing valuable helpful educational information and yes that is kind of the part that takes the most time is following the research and writing all the content right but that is one piece of the puzzle and whenever you share helpful educational content, you need to tie it back to your offer, to who you are, how you help people. And so, yes, I 100% really try and coach and encourage my members on how can we, yes, be sharing helpful stuff, but always tying it back to, hey, here's how I can help you more and just make sure people are really aware. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, people need to hear things I don't know how many times anymore, like 20 times before they're even going to start thinking like, oh, I might need that. Mm -hmm. So we just have to keep providing value and keep driving it back to what the next step is. Yeah, no, I love that. And the other thing, too, I, I feel like even for the practitioners that have, um, you know, maybe the, maybe they have a front desk staff, like it's something like your service is something that even the front desk staff can like learn how to utilize. Like it's, it's, it's just laid out so simply and uh, they, all they Plug need and is play. Little... Oh yeah. You could have yeah. an assistant take this and, and, and then... schedule it all out. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like so much work off your plate for a very, very affordable price. I think your services are like amazing, honestly. And, and, uh, and on top of that, like you're, I think the other side of it is like the, the business approach that you took, like just showcasing that, you know, just because you're a natural practice doctor doesn't mean you have to go and seek patients. Like you got creative with the type of business model you, you wanted to create. And here you are writing content for doctors, which is very creative. Very we amazing. have to be who we are. Like, you know, yeah. Most people who go to naturopathic medical school, like they do want to be practitioners, mm -hmm. but like, if you realize you don't like, yeah, there's other things you can do. Like, I love naturopathic medicine. I want to support this community. I don't just cause I realized, Oh, I don't want to be a practitioner. I don't want to just go off and become a pharmacist or something. Right. So it's yeah. like, yeah, there's always ways to do your thing and be yeah. you. So I love it. But Hey, you know what? Okay. This was crazy to shift gears to the chat GPT. Yeah, let's do I, it. um, I knew I was coming on your podcast today and I opened my email this morning and I actually had a message from one of your listeners who had heard my previous episode. Mm-hmm. And she was asking me about Nurture Unleashed, but she was saying that she's a pediatrician. And so she was wondering, okay, could I use this content, like make it relevant for children? And what's funny is I was like, you know what? Like, if you would have asked me this a couple months ago, I would have said, yeah, no, it's not really going to help you because this is written certainly more for like, practices that are serving mostly adult population. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like all kinds of general functional medicine type of content. So previous, like a couple of months ago, I would have said, yeah, it's probably not going to work for you. But because of chat GPT, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I actually think you can use it really, really easily. And I went over to chat GPT and I opened it up and I put in a prompt and I just said, um, I said, act as a copywriter for a pediatrician who specializes in integrative and functional medicine. Please rewrite the following social media post so that it speaks to an audience of parents interested in supporting their children's health naturally. Then I just grabbed uh, one of the captions from a Nurture Unleashed bundle. I plugged it in there and it rewrote it. 
And it, it pretty much wrote it the exact same way that I had it originally, but it put the spin in there. So it started out with like, um, did you know that supporting your little one's overall health can lead to better sleep? Like it's a post about sleep. Right. And then, and, and then it, it just like put in this little spin on here's how to help your child sleep soundly, like amazing. And That's, literally yeah. just in a second. And I did it with another one. Cause I try to put in, um, recent news, like studies that come out. Mm -hmm. Um, so there was this study on like how just exercising improves your microbiome. And so I had written this post on, Hey, everyone thinks about just food for your microbiome, but what about exercise? And so I put that one in and said, do the same thing, right? Change it for the pediatrician. And it was so great. Like it That's... kept almost exactly the flow. It kept the exact flow of how I had it originally written. But then it was like, listen to this the last sentence. It says, um, it says hit the heart. If this inspired you to keep your little ones active. So it just like added the spin on children. Yeah, so yeah. I ended up telling her, I was like, yeah, like, let me show you how, like, content, like have your assistant go tell chat GPT to change it to an audience for a pediatrician. That's incredible. That's, that's actually, so, you know, I guess the reason I brought you here was to speak specifically on chat GPT. I recently tuned into one of your live Q and A's. Uh, not the live version, but you know, the recording afterwards. And I saw yeah. you speaking on this topic uh, and this example of what you're saying around, like shaping the content around your, your specific audience was so fascinating to me. I was like, we need, we need to talk about that because I think it's a game changer for the practitioner and also even, even for your business model, right? Because now it's allowing you to, to kind of integrate these practitioners that do see like a, you know, specific audience and you're able to like still provide the service and help them shape it to their audience even better. Um, so it, it, it's super incredible. I think chat GBT is a, a game changer, but I, I do want to like rewind a bit, um, <laughs> to kind of, to like, to let's, let's talk to get up to this point and like catch everyone up to speed for those that aren't familiar with the whole chat GPT situation. But um, if, if you can briefly, you know, explain exactly, you know, what is chat GPT? Um, yeah, no as problem. You know it. I yeah. know I was at an event over the weekend <laughs> with a bunch of functional medicine practitioners and someone had the speaker mentioned it in passing and people were putting the, in the chat, what's chat GPT. And I was like, Oh, yeah, people yeah, still I know. aren't actually aware of what it is. Yeah, a lot of people aren't, you know, so they're focused on if they're focused if you're on patient not care. living and breathing in the marketing community, maybe you don't know what it is. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so Chat GPT is a an artificial intelligence AI writing tool. It is online, it is free to access for anybody. It's created by a company called OpenAI. And so you know you're in the right place when you're on some website that says chat.openai.com. Um, so you can just Google chat GPT and you'll find it. You'll create um, an account so that you can log in. And it is set up like a chat. And so you start the chat by putting a prompt, it's called. And it's it, because it's a writing tool essentially. And so you can say to chat, G, ask chat GPT to write anything you want. Um, so yeah, you can just go say, write me a social media post on um, natural ways to improve sleep, right? Mm -hmm. And it will spit something out. Um, and so, and then what is also interesting about how it works is that it does continue down. It builds within one single chat. And so it remembers what you have said all along so that then if it spits that out and you don't like it, you can say, okay, try again, except this time change the second paragraph into a bulleted list, right? And yeah, so you can yeah. continue the conversation and it builds, it remembers um, within each chat. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the sum of it. Um, I mean, there's just so many directions we could go with this I, conversation. I know, I know. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to, I'll direct <laughs> you. I'll help, I'll help direct you. You can be the guide. Uh, so, so, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. So to your point, it's, it's a conversation. It's very conversational. I mean, I mean, you, it's like you're texting a friend essentially that 
knows a ton of information and produces a ton of information like instantly. Um, one example that I'll use, you know, I was trying to create copy for um, a, like a, a, a promotion for a service a, in a wellness center and it came up with the entire copy for it. And then I was like, you know, and I was make you know, make it as an ad. Then I was like, okay, rewrite that as a text message. And then it will type it out as a text message. Like, and then it's like, okay, we'll make that like a more, like if you're texting a friend and then it changed. So it'll constantly like create iterations of the same content and shape it to the, your exact needs, which is actually incredible. And on top of that, like you said, you can ask it to create, you know, a social post about sleep, health, sleep, he healthy sleep habits. And it just pulls information off the internet. It's like scrubbing information off the internet. Um, yeah. And so in your talk, you kind of discuss uh, a little bit about, you know, the information. I know you mentioned there there was a timeline to like, how up to date is it on information? First, of all? Right. So chat GPT was trained with with data and information points um, up until 2021. And so that's a that's a limitation we need to be aware of um, mm -hmm. it. If you are at, if you want it, if you want to share uh, current, new, um, any kind of research that is within the past couple of years, ChatGPT is not accessing that as part of its uh, information set. And so, because you can actually say to ChatGPT in that prompt, if I wanted to say, you know, write that social media post about better sleep, include references, okay? <laughs> It does that um, not well at all. Um, for one thing, yes, the latest reference would be 2021. Um, the other thing, the references are not not always accurate, even to what mm -hmm. it's saying. And a lot of times they're broken links. So it's not designed to be like a reference tool. It's not designed to be a research tool. It's not designed to write content in that way. Um, and so that's, that's a definitely a limitation as far as like the information it's accessing. Um, but I think probably more importantly, the thing to be aware of is that it is not trained to provide accurate or true information. That's not what it was made for. Mm -hmm. um, it's a language model and it's trained to predict the next most likely word in a sequence. And so what that means, really what that means is that everything it writes sounds great because the words are strung together in a very logical sequence. It sounds very smart, but we always have to fact check mm -hmm. um, because it will 100% make things up. <laughs> it will make things up to the extreme of, of you could ask it, um, uh, you could ask it, you know, tell me, something that happened with a famous person or whatever, it will completely make up a story and say this thing happened. And it's called, it's called a hallucination when the chat bot does that, when it just makes something up, it's said to be hallucinating. And it's, and it's because of the way it's written, it's, it sounds very convincing. Like, yes, it's, it sounds just, convincing. It's a great, um, it's like a great English tool, right? Like a, like an English writer, um, in that category there it's able to create and structure sentences and paragraphs and all that good stuff real quick what I, i'm just curious because you know this is new technology got released i forget how long ago uh, a couple of several months ago actually right um it became public just in november yeah november and then of 2022 uh -huh. immediately gained like millions of followers in the first month which is like broke all kinds of records for people using just using exploded the tool. yeah um and then i feel like in, in you know in the industry or in the market in general everything went from crypto nft <laughs> to like now it's ai like ai right, is the right, big right. thing and everyone's all obsessed with it which i think honestly you know ai this technology is is going to be a game changer uh, in general. And this is just the first iteration of it, right? So it's yeah, only going to get There's a reason better. to be obsessed. Like there are people just ignoring it. Yeah. But we're not going to be able to ignore it forever. Exactly. So my question is, and, and we'll get back into like how to use it in, in a more pra in a practice setting, but 
you know, what was your initial thoughts on AI? Because I feel like, you know, for a lot of people, when it, anything comes out, anything new comes out, there's a lot of fear around it and a lot of bashing and like, yeah, not extent, not willing to openly use it or try to incorporate it into a business, right? Everyone's immediate, just like, no. And there's also fear around, oh, it's going to steal my job or, you know, it's like, but yeah. I'm just curious, what was your take on that? What was your approach and what was Yeah, your you know, as a general rule in life, I don't tend to be an early adapter. And I would say I was not an early adapter. I mean, the fact that I'm all in right now is not early adapt ad adaption, <laughs> adoption, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I didn't sign up in November of 2022. I'm more one to kind of look, see what's happening. Like, so there was that piece. Um, I'm also not a fearful person. I don't think once have I thought, oh my God, my job's going away. I'm just not like, you know what human beings we have, I could give you like a list of instant off the top of my head, like 25 things we can do that the AI tool can't do. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. so I think that to me, this is a tool, like all these other tools I have been promoting forever. Like I love prompts to get us past the blinking cursor, sentence starters. I love formulas that give us a way to think of how to structure the words on the page. I love templates where you can just fill in the blank and plug and play. Like these are all tools that make it easier for us to write that I have always been a proponent of. Now we're bringing another tool into the scene that is also going to make it easier. And I think it actually, it's not perfect, but when we're using it right, it can help us write better content than what we could do without it. So I am all for tools that that help us do better work. So um, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like you you accepted it and and you know started to incorporate it in the business, which I think is honorable and and also like an advantage. I I think by adopting it early into your business model specifically, one you're probably create you know your efficiency in in productivity is probably increased quite a bit because it's a, a very helpful tool, which yeah. we'll get into like some examples, and then um. Yeah, too, is like it's also adding value to the client experience. And and you found a way to make it add value to the client experience. Yeah. Uh, which is expanding your own business model, which is the example that you're saying with this client reaching out to you about, you know, I have pedi I have pediatric patients. How do I? Right. You know, do you write anything for pediatric patients? You're like, I don't, but we can actually Chat shape GPT it. Does. <laughs> yeah, right. We can shape it. Chat GPT it's to make solving, it. It is solving a problem. That's another perspective I come from, like. Every, every offer that I create, every service, new service I want to provide, like I'm looking to solve a problem, right? And so this problem of creating content for naturopathic practice, I tried to solve that initially by writing one-on-one -on -one for practitioners and like write all their blog posts and their emails and their social media. And it's so freaking time consuming. It's like, I could have two clients, you know? Yeah. And so then that's when I shifted and it was like, that's when I realized, hey, all these new studies are coming out that everybody should be sharing about. Why can't I just kind of write the basic blurb and then, you know, they can take it and run with it. So that's where I created this, you know, content subscription. But then the next level problem, and this is like the the question I get more than anything from practitioners is, will it work for me because I specialize in fill in the blank because I specialize in pediatrics was today, but because I specialize in autoimmune disease, because I specialize in thyroid, because I specialize in women's hormonal health, because I specialize right in yeah. gut health. Will it work yeah. for me? Like that's the number one question I always get. And I've always had some hesitation and I've always said like, eh, mm, maybe not, like yeah. not specific to that. Like it's general functional medicine content that can work for anybody, like more of a generalized practice. Mm -hmm. But now we can take that and customize it really, yeah. really quickly with the help of AI. Yeah. Yeah. Because before it was, it was up to the user to first subscribe into your content bundles and then 
they, you know, not only would they have to deploy it into their internal email systems, like that's one aspect of work that they have to do. But, you know, if it wasn't for their niche, then they would have to go in and essentially change out some of the wording to make it. Exactly. And it, and so to now, me, I'm like, hey, it's easy. Like, just change some wording. But yeah. no, that's not actually easy for everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So now this is a. Uh, this is definitely an, I, the way I see it is an, it's enhancing your business and the customer experience, right? It's enhancing yeah. the, the the provider's experience around getting this content out that fits their demographic or their their specific niche. Um, so I want to jump in. You know what? What are some ways that you've thought about, like how can this help a, a provider um, without, like, yeah, without it, like say. I don't know anything about you, but I'm coming into startup business and I hear about open AI. Like what are the ways that it can help a small provider like in their sure. business? In their practice? Sure. We can go through kind of some example use cases. Mm-hmm. Um, so why don't we start with like um, just writing a basic website? Okay. Yeah. So, because that's always a you know service that I've done for a long time, writing website copy, right? And I have um, I have copywriting templates that kind of outline, hey, here's the sections you should have on your homepage, here's the sections you should have on your service, your about page, right? Um, so now, like, where does AI come into that? Um, oh, another tool that I always love when writing a website is how do you get clear on your message? Story brand, right? So I'm story brand certified and this gives us a framework to think through what are the messaging points that I need? How do I get clear on who it is I'm helping? How do I explain what I do? What's my plan? Okay. So all these tools now, where, where do we use AI? And here's, here's what I like to do. So one way is as a brainstorming buddy for those messaging points. So if you're trying to think through, okay, how do I want to explain uh, the um, the problems or the pain points of my ideal clients? And you want to brainstorm out messaging points for that. Go to ChatGPT and go and put in you know, I'm a naturopathic doctor. I work with, hey, what's your niche, right? I work with um, people who struggle with thyroid issues. Mm-hmm. Um, what would be some of the, what would be some of their pain points um, of why they might want naturopathic medicine? And it will spit out all these ideas, like ideas that you would not even think of maybe. <laughs> And so it's really, really great as that just brainstorming. And usually when I use it that way, I'm not, I'm not using it as a writing tool. I'm using it as an idea generator. So I'm just taking those ideas. I'm not taking like the exact wording, um, but I'm taking those ideas to say, oh yeah, that's what I really want to emphasize. I forgot that they might have that pain point. Like that's a really good one I want to emphasize. So that's one way, like brainstorming out messaging points. Um, should we go on this idea of the website, writing a website? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing here would be the wrong thing to do. The wrong thing would to do would be to go in and say, um, please write a website for a naturopathic doctor. Okay. That will a hundred percent get you failure. Mm -hmm. I use the analogy of a, like a riding lawnmower. That's like turning on the riding lawnmower and just putting it out in the grass. It's not going to know where to turn around or go around the trees. You have to drive it. And that's with AI. You have to drive it. You Mm -hmm. have to give it enough information to work with. And so what, when something, writing something long, you want to break it down into part by part. And so, sorry, I'm back. I'm going a little off on that. No, um, I know there's so much to there's so like much to dissect. <laughs> from the open ended question of, "Hey, write a website for a naturopathic doctor," you actually need to prime it with information, with the talking points initially. So you actually need to 
do that messaging work on the side, like maybe follow a story brand framework, help chat GPT, brainstorm out the parts of your messaging. Then you need to feed that back to chat GPT and say, look, here's my messaging points. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I help patients with thyroid. Here's their main pain points. Um, here's my services. Here's the action I want people to take on the website. You have to provide that if you want to get any kind of outcome that's decent. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is a, so this is actually a new, it's actually a new title or position that's that's come into the market it's called prompting right a prompt you yeah. become a there's such thing now as a prompt engineer so it's someone who knows how to initiate the conversation with ai to get their desired results which is like maybe it's website content so it's not yeah. so yeah so like basically what you're saying is you you need to be specific with the instructions that you give this thing because it's not just gonna create everything for you the way you want it right like you need to yeah. lay out some foundation some boundaries uh give as much as possible and so i think that brings up the point is like go you, this is something that you need to it's like a muscle you need to train right like being able to communicate with chat gpt like maybe even just getting an account and start playing with it so you can like understand how it's working yeah. um so yeah so sorry but this part is common sense it's kind of like you wouldn't go to you wouldn't go to like your assistant or to a content writer or to a copywriter and just tell them hey write my site you would give them the the information they need to be successful and so you need to provide chat gpt also with the information it needs to be successful and if you don't do that it will literally make stuff up it doesn't care it will just yeah. make stuff up <laughs> it won't tell you wait but you didn't tell me the pain points it's not going to tell you that it's going to make it up yeah so um so providing the context um is huge um, you know, and then if you're if you're writing a website, that's gonna have like a lot of sections. And what I find is that ChatGPT does not do well with something a big thing like that. You have to break it down, and so you have to then you can prime it with all that information I just listed your main messaging points. Then you want to go in, and then you say first, let's work on the headline, right? <laughs> and so you work with ChatGPT first on the headline, and then you go okay, now let's move on to the services section. And so you take it through step by step and you coach it essentially like you're, you're a writing coach essentially for this tool. Isn't that, that's so incredible to think yeah. about. Like it, you're having this conversation and, and you're speaking to it exactly the way you're saying that. It's like, I right. say please to chat GPT right. <laughs> way more than I need to. You don't need to say please, but I'm always like, please try again. <laughs> hey, who knows this thing might become so smart that it remembers how you treated it and you were treating it really well. So it'll spare you when the robots take over, right? <laughs> it'll respond. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are some ways. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's incredible how it works. It's just, yeah, you have to approach. I think I like that, like approaching it as a, as a writing coach, right. Or as a, like you're, uh, you're essentially taking this, let's say, you're taking this kid that knows everything in the world and you just need to provide them with the instructions on how to use that information. Yep. Um, yeah. So I, I love that. So, okay. So you can absolutely use it to build a website. Yeah. So that's one thing off a of practitioner's plate. Right. Um, and then what's, what's kind of the other area in the business yeah. So, um, I mean, an example of say emails. Okay. Um, so the nurture emails would be, you know, yes. So here's the thing about, okay. Nurture emails versus sales emails. Maybe we can just touch on both real fast, but yeah, like, absolutely. or if you want to write a sales email, um, it would be a similar idea where you need to provide that context. You need to provide the main messaging points. And then you can just say, okay, write a sales email about this. So like, for example, say you're bringing in a new service to your practice and um, you want to invite people in to try it out, right? You might just do like one email blast about it. So yes, you could just say write a single sales email. But what I find is that that does tend to come out a little bit generic and dry and usually it like 
um, it will like too quickly say, hey, I have this thing I want you to come in without giving a lot of context. And so from a copywriting perspective, we know like I have always used formulas and frameworks mm -hmm. and templates because I know they've worked for me in the past, or I know they've worked for others in the past. And because they're following more psychological principles that that's why we have these formulas. Um, and so you can actually bring the power of formulas into chat GPT as well, um, a couple of ways. One way is you, if you are familiar with any copywriting formulas, you can tell chat GPT to use that. So you can say, write a sales email, follow the story brand copywriting framework. Really? You can really say that? You can, but it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work unless you you have to teach it what it is. Cause it, so it does know some frameworks and it gets some of them right. Some mm -hmm. of the simpler ones, like follow the ADA formula, it almost always gets right. That's A-I-D-A. -A. That's attention, interest, desire, action. So that's yeah. a copywriting formula. You could say follow the ADA copywriting formula. And it will usually get that one right. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't get all of them right. I tried story brand, it got it wrong. And I was like, was that the story brand framework? And it was like, yes, blah, 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 blah. And explained story brand framework totally wrong. Yeah. So it didn't know it. But if you tell it, okay, follow the story brand framework. And if you maybe can copy and paste in there to say what is the story brand framework. Exactly then it can do it. Okay. Jeez, that's incredible. Um, other way, the way I love to use as well is just copying and pasting in a template. So I mentioned I've created a whole library of copywriting templates that are based on work I've done with clients, like things that I've seen effective for me. And so I have some sales email templates. And so if it's just one email, like versus a website where there's all these long sections, one email is a pretty confined um item that mm -hmm. chat GPT can handle in one prompt, right? So you could actually just copy and paste the template for the email. And after you've given it the information about your offer, you say, follow this template. And that's like, boom, boom, done. Like that's, it comes out amazing. So that, that's incredible. So you can feed it templates. You can tell it to follow a formula. Um, one other way you can do something like this is really just copying and pasting an entire fully done example. So like in copywriting, we call these swipe files. If you see an email you really love, it worked well for you, you thought it was written great, copy and paste it into chat GPT and say, use this example as a template. Provided that you have already given it all of your messaging points about whatever your offer is, mm -hmm. it will switch that out. That's, that's so, yeah, that's mine. Your mind blown. That is totally, <laughs> I mean, it, it's like, yeah, you can, you can essentially, and it brings up another point that I want to ask you, but you can essentially take the, yeah, the frameworks of like people who know how to do these things, take their framework and then throw it in there and put your spin on it like that. That's just like you're essentially eliminating years of experience to figure out what those, you know, like 100 percent. Um, And it's that all in, is in the, an instant. It's like the fastest, most powerful thing I've seen is plug in your messaging points, plug in a template and boom, you are done and like yeah. have an amazing output because that's the huge thing. It's like the quality of what you put into the prompt determines the quality of what you get out. And that's where the human comes in. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I was just going to say, I was like, <laughs> it, and it, it, it was going to say it as it relates to your business, right? Because it's everything like, yes, you're a copywriter, but you understand the business or the framework around like these tools, right? You understand how to sell something, um, which is something that maybe a doctor doesn't understand that there's a psychology behind it. There's a protocol, there's a way to right. create demand. You know, there's these little internal things that only an expert in that field knows. And then when you combine that with chat DPT, which is why it's so important to have someone like you on the same team, then it just makes, it makes it so much easier. It's like, you're going to, you're going to ensure that the quality of the content that's coming out of chat GPT is going to be great. It's the thoughtful strategy part 
that this tool doesn't know how to do. And when when we see the output, we need to be able to interpret. Um, is that the strategy I wanted? Like, what's missing? Like, so yeah, there's exactly. Yeah. And so it, the other thing I wanted to ask you, because it brings up, I know we, we're talking about like taking these templates from other people, maybe an email from some swiping content, right? Stuff like that. It maybe doesn't relate directly, but it does bring up the question around like anything that it's putting coming out. Is that like, are we plagiarizing it? Will, will we get a lawsuit in the mail? Yeah. You know, for okay. Like, so let's, what do you know about that? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know a lot about it. Of course, I definitely need to stay in my lane. I'm not a lawyer. However, um, I mean, nobody knows much about this, to be honest. We're all figuring it out as we go. Mm -hmm. But okay, here's what I understand, because this is a really important question. Um, ChatGPT accesses this huge database of information, which essentially yeah, comes from the internet. Okay. We don't know what all the sources are that it's gleaning from. And because it is trained to produce the most likely string of words in a sequence, um, if somebody else puts in a similar prompt that you put in, it could spit out a similar outcome. And you both could publish a similar thing, not knowing it. <laughs> and technically, like, it's going to be a completely gray area that's probably never, ever, ever going to be enforced because it's going to become impossible. But like what I have heard as far as AI generated art, if it's 100% gen generated by AI, nobody can own the copyright on it. So multiple people could publish the same exact thing and nobody can say, I own that, I have the copyright because AI made it. And so if you extend that to content, and if two people produce very similar content because it was spit out by AI exactly the same, nobody can sue the other person for copying them because <laughs> it can't be copyrighted. Yeah. Okay, but I would be more concerned about like, did it spit out something that somebody really did write originally online, right? Mm -hmm. And how are you ever going to know that? I mean, essentially, there's really no way. Yes, you could put it into a plagiarism checker which is what some recommend. Like some recommend to say, if you're actually gonna use word for word content that is spit out by AI, you should also run it through a plagiari plagiarism checker to see if it, ha if it has like taken a big chunk of something that's already out there copyrighted. Yeah. So that's kind of one concern. Um, I will say on the checkers, I've seen... Um... You know, when this first came out, kids started to use it for essays and stuff like that. And it was passing the checkers like it was all original work, which was really cool. Yeah. And they were getting away with it. But now they've integrated like tools to, um, to recognize to recognize AI. So it is plagiarism now, but yeah, it's you're plagiarizing the AI essentially. Right, right. Exactly. And I think so this does extend into a slightly different area but similar idea is what i worry about is like because i well no i guess it's the same thing i've said because we don't know where the content came from we're not able to give attribution we're not able to say this information came from wherever um i just think it opens a can of worms but i think that the ways so it is in the way that you use it and so if you put in a very open-ended like yeah, write me a social post about whatever, and it pulls all these things, It it's less likely to be original than if you do the way that we've been talking about this whole call where we provide it with the messaging points or we mm -hmm. provide it with the educational content that we know to be true and accurate. And when we provide it with a lot of that human input, I think that it's a more like like that's a really way to be safe about this and not be questioning like, well, I don't know where that content came from. Yeah. So yeah. it's a it's so it's a difference between saying like write an essay on healthy sleep habits, right? And then so like I can type that in on my end, you could type it in on your end, and essentially we could get the same thing. And yeah. it's also pulling it's very broad, so it's probably pulling information off 
maybe blog posts, other articles, right? Right. Where plagiarism could be a problem where it varies is like, okay, let's be more specific, right? So it's like write uh, an essay around health benefits the health benefits of sleep for kids or, you know what I mean? It's like giving that, that added variable where you're making it more personalized to your needs. And that's where it, I, it eliminates the possibility of plagiarism oh. in, in some ways. Yeah. Um, and I think, and always just going back over it when you're done saying, okay, is this how I would say it? What yeah. could I add in that really makes it, makes it more me? Like, yeah. And any I feel- part of, you know, the human piece that we can put in there. And I feel like that's what I've been using it for uh, recently. It was like, as soon as it came out, I was like, okay, how do I use this in my daily life in work to maximize my time? Um, and I feel like I've used it a lot for like prompting emails um, and uh-huh. just using it as like, like you said, it's an idea creator. Um, like if I'm trying to type a formal email, a lot of effort goes into my, how I word it, how, how I structure my sentences how I do all this. Stuff. And now I have chat GPT be like, okay, write a formal email to my, you know, coworker about X, Y, Z pops it out. And then I get in there and I'm like, okay, I want to change this word. I'm going to make it a little bit more friendly. Let's get, and then done, you know? And it's like, exactly. that's, that's where I feel like for me, at least it, it's maximized my time. Pass um, the blinking cursor. Yep. It's huge. Exactly. Yep. Huge. Yep. And, um, and so, which actually that, that kind of, leads us into like I think another way around like how to use it now in the business and probably the easiest way too is is around like social media yeah um like how have you seen it be helpful and for for marketing on social media yeah I mean I think it, it comes back to one of those things you said previously on like repurposing content in different ways and that's what I think is so amazing where you can have a piece of content and then say, rewrite this as a caption, rewrite this as a video script, a 30 second video script. Um, you rewrite this as, you know, you would have maybe a different caption, you would have a different caption on Instagram than you would have on um, TikTok, right? So rewrite this or, re- or Twitter, rewrite this as a Twitter. So like for repurposing. Interesting. In different, yeah, formats. I didn't need- I think you took it a, a step deeper than I did. That that's you're that's so true. right. Yeah, I mean you can uh, you can take the same information and then yeah write a video script, and then now you can shoot yourself as you know doing the video saying exactly what what it kind of spits out. And that's something right. So that I think is just gonna become more and more important. Like the video part is become more and more important because anybody can post an AI generated caption and an AI generated. Um, image on Instagram, but only you can show your face and deliver it and like talk about it. And so, yeah, even if you have AI write your caption, like you delivering it makes it uniquely you. Mm -hmm. So I think those kind of like human things are going to become more differentiating. Yeah. I literally, there are some captions I see on social media and i know they were written by chat gpt because you start to recognize yeah the style. exactly yeah it's very even uh... the style even when you start doing things like make it fun make it quirky i recognize that style too like because chat gpt has some patterns that once you see it it becomes kind of obvious yeah yeah <laughs> so what do you suggest are, i mean are you is it probably beneficial to just go ahead and like get the template from chat GPT and then incorporate your own, like how you would phrase it or how, like what's the best method for that portion as far as like, you mean, captions? wait, avoiding that. It sounds like yeah, 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 yeah. AI. Yeah. It's it. I think it goes back like, so, okay. <laughs> probably a, a lot of things that I've already said on this call help avoid that. Like, Either say, um, just kind of rewording things a little bit afterwards. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's that's probably the easiest answer for this yeah. is to take what it, it what it produces and just massage it to yeah. sound like you. Yeah, make it. That's your own. probably the best way to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. You know, aside from say, um, 
um, yeah, just the amount that you can feed it will determine if you give it a lot more information to work with, yeah. it's less likely to come out with something that sounds generic. Yeah. I think the the best functionality though from that for for using it towards content creation is um being being able to translate that content across platforms. Yeah. And have it fit specific to that platform. For example, the way I said, you know, doing write this as an email. Now write it as a text message. Now, right, it is as an Instagram post. Like I love that. that. I love it for that purpose of repurposing, especially if you've written the original piece yourself. Yeah, yeah, because then you just put that in for me. Be like, hey, write this as this, and then yeah, it's it's incredible, and it happens so instantaneously. Um, is there any other like ways that someone can use it in practice, or that you've seen someone use it in practice? Um, yes, I'm sure there are millions of other ways that this could be put to use. <laughs> are there any other ways? I mean, that, yeah, that you're familiar with that you can, that maybe I don't we know. I on. think I'd be going down a rabbit hole, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I try to stay in my lane as much as I can, which is content and copywriting. Uh -huh. And I think we have touched on like, a lot already on ways to use it for content and copywriting and yeah but yeah i think as we go and learn more and more i'll probably be sharing something new next week because right. Right. it's just changing so fast and learning so much so right now with uh so i know you mentioned it's it's free uh i believe there's a paid version what what do you know about the differences in that yeah um, the paid version at this point gives you access to uh, four point chat GPT four, as opposed to 3.5. And, um, I find it does provide better output. Um, it's only, it's, I think it's like $20 a month. It's not that much money. Um, and so if it is a tool that I think that you're going to be using a lot, I think it's worth it because, um, there, I'm not sure the technicalities behind the scenes, but, um, what I see as the output, it tends to come out more conversational, easier to read, a little more natural. Um, and it knows its limitations a little more. So chat GPT three is more likely to just go ahead and make stuff up. Whereas chat GPT four is more likely to say, I'm not able to access that information or I'm not able to do that. Um, like it knows it can't yeah. find a recent research article online, for example. Wow. Yeah. And that, that would be, a, I mean, if you do get the paid one, it's a, it's a business, business expense, yeah. um, easy business expense. And it's, it's gonna... worth it if it's something you're using. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, the, I don't know if you've seen, uh, I recently listened to another podcast kind of mentioning like it, it's also great for um, there was a guy who put in like he was like create a P&L uh, like a, the most ideal version of P&L with these numbers and and like it'll actually put spreadsheets together too. Uh, apparently. I don't know. Are you familiar okay. with that at all? Um, I didn't know. I haven't yeah. done spreadsheets with it. So like there's like uh, yeah, you can use it like accountants can utilize that. I don't know how maybe in a business maybe it is like creating a PNL that works, um, uh, creating budgets and like feeding the information around like how, you know, how should I allocate this, t this money? Here's my categories that I'd like to spend on. And it'll literally put that together for you. And then it's like, all right, now put that into a spreadsheet. And then it'll, so it's, it's sound, it, it's kind of crazy. Like the things that it can do. Um, yeah. the other interesting thing is around, um, around board board exams so i don't know if you've seen like it, it's it's already like passing these like a uh, like the uh the bar uh it's, oh yes it's yep. passing, like, it will pass the bar exam it'll pass uh it sounds like it'll pass medical board exams as well at least the written ones and like wow which i don't know if you've thought about like the future like the future too much but i i know something that was interesting that i heard was around um like creating an AI doctor to some degree, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and, and again, this is a this is probably another way like we could use it in practice eventually is like creating an AI 
uh, bot that is attached to your EMR service that like you can ask it helpful things about like what prescription would work best yeah. in this scenario, things like that. I think I think we might be heading in that direction. I think the other thing that I that I kind of heard was, you know, in healthcare in general, you know, it's we're spending like four four trillion dollars in healthcare. Yeah. And around 90 percent of that goes towards um, physician services. Mm. Right. So like people think pharmaceuticals is what we spend it on, but that's only like 8%, like 10% literally is only ph pharmaceuticals. Everything else is like human output. Yeah. And I think the interesting thing to think about is like in the future, once this gets really good and it's, I mean, here's the thing, it's already passing board exams, right? Like it, it's already really good. It's already making decisions as a clinician it, written. It's like, I think it could help reduce healthcare spending to some degree. So you know? a good friend of mine works in public health research and data analysis for them. And she's actually going back to school to learn about the AI piece of things. But um, she said that she explained a uh, uh, some clinical trials where they're using AI. And one example was um, it would collect a, an enormous amount of information from the patient um, a patient being, uh, say, I think it was like, for example, um, with a significant knee injury or maybe post-surgery on a knee surgery. And then in order to come up with that post-surgery treatment plan, the AI would take all this information, including things like um, related to their life, like are, do they have to stand all day at their job? Do they have kids who they have to drive around? Or, you know, ver or, you know, is it a single mom like working three jobs versus like somebody working at home? Like they're going to have different ability to do PT and do exercises and take care of themselves and like, and what are their values and what's important to them? And like all this huge data dump of information about the patient to then decide, okay, what's the most reasonable post surgery follow up plan for this individual? Wow. And it would create like, Essentially, the way I understood it was like, okay, a doctor, if a doctor is going to collect all that information, figure out all the variables in their head, and then try to make the recommendation, AI can do it in a second, and then the doctor can just look at it and decide what's right or what's wrong. Wow. That's so But I think so that's one of the the benefits of AI is the vast amount of data that it can process and analyze in such a short amount of time. Yeah, it's 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 going to enhance the patient experience um, because that's time that the doctor cannot spend with the patient to come up with that plan. And so it's yeah. being able to lean on AI for that aspect is like, I think that's actually really huge. <laughs> it's like care. So essentially care should be getting better, right? Because You'll be you able would to... hope, right? Right? Yeah. It's so interesting. I know there's those people who are just like, it's taking over the world. But like, I I believe it's all in how we use it. And if we can figure out how to use it right. And you're not going to have them walk out with that treatment plan without a doctor looking at it, right? Mm -hmm. You're still going to have the human element. But yeah. maybe it can save time. Yeah. I think that's incredible. I think the other... The other thing too is uh like uh having a virtual assistant to some degree like it, at some point like being able to have an AI kind of integrate with um your finances with your car like credit cards debit cards with uh like should I buy this <laughs> or or even just like hey you know I'm trying to book a a trip to Hawaii find me the cheapest flights show yeah. you know give me the hotel. And then it'll literally cater like to finding that specific hotel that fits your needs around the, you know, centered around a location that actually fits your, your interests, right? Maybe there's some nice restaurants in the area and then it'll yeah, like, yeah, that's ask true. You, I've seen examples of it used for vacation planning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it's like, do you want me to go ahead and get it for you? Like, and then you're just like, yeah, okay, go ahead and run it on the card. Right. So it's like, yep. that's going to be a, a hell of a future because we're going to have, we're going to gain so much time back. Um, which again, I think will enhance every industry's, you know, customer experience. Yeah. Um, cause it's stuff you can't spend like, for example, I mean, even in your example, right. It's like, 
before AI, if a client came to you with like, can I use your content for pediatric stuff? It's like, you you can't, you can't necessarily <laughs> like, provide yeah, that but, much. Right. Yeah. yeah you but you're going to have to put in time, time and figure out how to change it. Blah, blah, blah. And like now, yeah, it, it now you're able to, with the help of AI, you're able to cater to that customer's needs, specific yep. needs. Um, exactly. And, and not waste the time. Like it's still, your time is still there, which is really cool. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we covered quite a bit. I'm actually curious what's, um, I guess the last, que last question is, is AI going to become sentient and is it going to take over the world? <laughs> gonna go with no okay <laughs> hard no on that one i told you i'm not one to buy into all the fear stuff yeah well that's awesome well that's it for me was there anything else you wanted to bring up that you think we may have missed or i think we've covered so much and i really appreciate the opportunity and the time and hope this is really helpful to some of your listeners no absolutely i i think it's super helpful i and i I don't think they will realize how helpful it is until they start playing with chat GPT and, and yeah. AI and stuff. So Go like, do it. Okay, so I have a prompt kit. I have a copywriting prompt kit. It has, it's all about getting past the blinking cursor. It has um, some prompts to get you started on chat GPT, but it also has a ton of just sentence starters for those um, when you need to just start writing that social post and you're looking at the blank screen or when you need to write that email subject line. So it's just a ton of getting past the blinking cursor. It's a free um, prompt kit that um, maybe we can link that in the show notes for people. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that in the description um, below. Um, so it's 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 a prompt kit, meaning like the prompts that we put into chat GPT. So it's specifically a, a, a free guide it's for AI. Yeah, part of it's AI, part of it you can use with or without AI. It's literally just sentence starters like for attention grabbing, okay. hooks for social media, stuff like that. Awesome. All right, cool. And then uh, easiest way to reach you for anyone that does want to like start working with you. Obviously, the links are in below, right, guys, if you want to work. With I them, hang but... out on Instagram is where I hang out. Okay. EricCook.WellnessWriter. Perfect. WellnessWriter.com. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, this was actually fun. Um, yeah, I, I do want to get an update in the future. You know, maybe we'll do this again in another couple, several months here. And yeah, see how... when everything changes again. Yeah, exactly. Right. They're coming out with new iterations of this. Stay every up single... to date. Yep, exactly. So <laughs> sounds amazing. Thank, thank you, you so Mike. much. All right, guys, we're all done here.